You know, fertilizer, particularly the phosphorus in fertilizer running off into the Great Lakes, has been identified by the International Joint Commission as the primary cause of harmful algal blooms. In a February report, the IJC urged state and local governments to take steps to prevent algae blooms by controlling phosphorus. Those recommendations include, go ahead, take a look, limiting phosphorus runoff, installing best management practices on farms, also addressing urban runoff for storing coastal wetlands, and also increasing monitoring and research. One of the authors of that report is with me here now, Raj Bajenkawar, I hope I pronounced that correctly, right. is joining me. Uh, thank you so much, Raj, for joining us. First of all, people may not even know what the International Joint Commission is. Tell us what the IJC is and what your role is in, I guess, really governing uh, the bodies of water around the Great Lakes. Uh, IJC is a binational organization. Uh, it's almost 100 year old. Uh, it was between U.S. and Canada that signed agreement under the Boundary Water Treaty of 1909. So IGC's main role that time was more water quantity related uh, to resolve the dispute between Canada and U.S., uh, the transboundary water. Uh, but in 1972, when we talked about initially at this show, you know, the algae bloom in 60s, that triggered both the U.S. and Canadian government sign a Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement of 1972, mm -hmm. and IGC was key in uh, defining that agreement. And that agreement was just updated, correct? Yes, recently updated. And under that rule, uh, seven and Article 7 of the rule talks about IGC should look at upcoming issues in the Great Lakes uh, Basin. So 2011 uh, algae bloom triggered, a commission took this uh, as a priority. And we did two years of study, and we just released the report, which you talked about in February. So we have that checklist that the IJC has put out, the, the, the recommendations of what should happen here. In terms of enforcement, where does that lie? It's mostly uh, on both the governments, both federal governments of U, uh, U.S. and Canada, as well as state governments, and then comes down to uh, cities and municipalities. So when you have that list, how do you tackle that? Do you say all five of these things or recommendations have to be done at once, or do you have to prioritize and say, well, first off, we're going to make sure that we're going to start looking at, at farms and the best practices and making sure that phosphorus runoff isn't happening? So it's a good question. Uh, our report is, uh, if you look at individual rep uh, individual recommendation, they are directed to uh, only specific institutes. So for example, you know, we are asking banning state uh, ultimate ban of uh, applying fertilizers or manure in the winter time. Like when the ground is frozen or the farms are covered with the snow, we are asking the both state and federal government to outrightly ban that practice. So, for, and for certain areas, you know, uh, other recommendations, they are very specific to jurisdiction where there, are, there is no such policy exists. So we have this, I guess, this very tenuous balance of best practices and recommendations and things that are actually mandated. And it is up to the state to come down with some kind of, uh, with some kind of mandate or some kind of law saying that you can no longer do these things. Because when you have a situation like this where it does then impact drinking water, people come back and say, well, wait a minute. So who's in charge of making sure that this doesn't happen again? Why is this such a difficult problem to tackle? It's actually, you know, we had a special workshop uh, we uh, in last year. We have experts from all the field, both U.S. and Canadian. Even if you talk about best management practices, there is not a one silver bullet solution. You know, some best management practices can you can apply in Indiana, you know, certain areas where the landscape is different. You can do certain practices. They work really good for certain elements. Most of the BMPs in the past were designed to stop uh, sediment loading from the farm mm -hmm. to the creeks and uh, lakes. But some of those ben, uh, best management practices may not work to stop the phosphorus. Uh, they sometimes help uh, controlling nitrate. So it's, it's not one silver bullet solution. So we had to work on several issues. For example, I think one of the talk uh, you know, in the show, you, sh you mentioned about this right time right quantity and right place. That's a really you know, one of the good practices we should apply. And we asked that also in our recommendations. So. Well, you have to know the conversation is now more intense than it ever has yes. been before. Raj, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. you know